This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. Thank you all for coming out. Um, I'm here tonight to talk about WordPress for artists. My name is Kay Adam White, you can call me Catam. Um, as Kurt and John just announced, I am one of the co-organizers of this meetup and have been helping out here for um, a little over a year. Sorry, I'll turn my Turn this down a little bit because it sounds echoey. Can people still hear me in the back? Yes. OK. Um, if at any point you can't see something on the slides or the text is too small, let me know. I try to keep the words to a minimum and to make them big. But um, definitely just raise a hand if you missed anything or if you're not able to see it. And we will go back. Um, so as I said, we're talking about making an artist website. And um, the reason that I'm giving this talk is kind of twofold. I am a web developer professionally. I work for a company called Boku. Uh, we do application development for the web. We're located just down by North Station. Um, and we build complex web applications for companies to have like you know the best tool to do their job. And that's great if you're a big company or if you're a tech company or a startup and you are you know driven to build a web product. But most of us aren't actually people that like personally produce technical work. Most of us end up making other types of stuff. And in addition to my life in technology, I am a volunteer and participant in Somerville Open Studios, which is one of the largest open studios, single weekend open studios events in the country. And um, I've been involved pretty heavily since it's coming up this May 3rd and 4th. We have started having a lot of conversations about websites for artists and marketing for artists, um, which is a demographic that Historically, you know, like art's been around for a lot longer than technology, and a lot of artists have been around a lot longer than the web, at least of the people that um, are even within our constituency in Somerville. We have the full range from like recent Tufts grad working in crazy like robotics metalworking stuff to somebody who's been painting in their house near Union Square for 60 years. And that's variety and that vibrancy of the community is what makes an arts community so interesting, but it also means that it's difficult for everybody to be talking at the same level around making, like getting their work out there online. And before I go any farther, I want to take a quick break just to get more of a sense for who's here. Who is an artist in this room? Awesome. Who, um, who's here for the first time to this meetup? Thank you so much for coming. Um, we're going to have a good Q&A period at the end. Uh, so given the size of the group, I am going to ask people whole questions. But um, we can definitely jump back into the slides later on if there's anything that you want to go over in greater detail once we're done. Um, who's a programmer comfortable with code? That's awesome. This is one of the first meetups we've had in a while where that was the minority of the room. I like that. Um, who's got a website? Who doesn't have a website? Cool. Hopefully, by the time you leave here, you'll have the tools that you need to build one. And if we do our job right, those tools will be good, and they will suit your needs. If not, we have some more work to do. Um, I was at an event yesterday, actually, in Somerville called TEDx Somerville. It was one of the series of locally organized TED events. And a friend of mine named Miranda Ashling gave a talk called Don't Make Art, Just Make Something. Regardless of whether you raised your hand for when I asked, are you an artist, almost everyone in this room, and I would, I would wager a guess that everyone in this room makes something, whether it's snacks or paintings or large sculptures made out of bicycle parts. Um, those are all things that you know people I know in my neighborhood do and take pride in, and they're all equally relevant. And we have tools online to share our work with the world more thoroughly than we ever have before. So in talking about making an artist's website, the first question is, is why would you want to put it out there? Like, you know, maybe what you make you don't consider to be that interesting to people. There's this concept that, you know, particularly in art, there's this whole thing where art is tied up in some sense of expertise. And I know a lot of people have said, like, well, my, my art's not that good. Why would I want to share it with people? But um, before I give some answers to that, is there anyone that has their own reason for putting up a website or for wanting to get their art out there? A lot of you raised your hand saying you had websites. Surely one of you has a reason. Yep. Lots of reasons. Sure. So calling card, portfolio, showing people, showing galleries. You mentioned sales. Is there any other reasons? I don't want to my own stuff, so I don't where to find it. 
has a personal archive. That's an incredibly interesting one for me personally. Um, yep. Well, it builds credibility. Credibility, indeed, having a website. It's, it's a calling card, but it's also, also is a portfolio at the same time. And having a place to point people can definitely increase your credibility. Um, when we were doing a brainstorming talk about this, we sort of came down with three core reasons. Two are the flip side of the same coin. One, get exposure. Get your work out in front of more eyes so that you can reach people that you've never reached before. The other side of that coin is build a following. Get those people to come back to start looking at your work again and to wondering, oh, I saw that really interesting artist at that show at Bedford or one of these other communities. Where, like, I want to I wanna follow that artist. I want to understand more about what they make and to know when they've got new work. And finally, this is more speaking to the archiving and, and credibility side. You curate yourself when you're making a website. You're basically jurying your own show. And having the exercise of going through and picking what you share, even if you decide in the end to share everything, gives, gives you a better sense about like, what type of conversation you want to have about your work. So if those are the three reasons to have an artist's website. What does it take to do it well? What are the attributes of an effective artist's website? And this is very subjective. I'm going to probably not cover things. I'm not going to get into archiving, for example. Um, that might matter very personally to you. But I think that these are the ones that I've seen the most often. Generally, you need something to look at. I know there was at least one person on the list who RSVB who's a musician. Could you raise your hand if you're a musician? Sweet, a couple. Um, I'm not going to get too heavily into that. I was looking for some good resources. I wasn't able to turn up anything that I could incorporate well. Um, but please, let's talk afterwards. I'd love to understand more about your needs. Um, this is going to be focused primarily on visual art. Um, if you're showing visual art, you need something to look at. It's generally a good idea to have a good picture of it. Like, you know, if you work in, is anyone working purely digitally, start to finish, doing it on the computer? A couple. Um, unless you're in that boat, you're going to transfer your work from the physical to the digital at some point. And the better a photograph it is, the better your work's going to look online. And that's going to give people a more accurate sense of what it is that they're looking at. Um, so something to look at is kind of the, the first step. You know, take a photograph of your art, even if it's with a camera phone. And they're pretty good these days. I know of uh, several professional photographers that use their phones sort of more than their big, heavy cameras. But you need to get the images online. And then you need to give them some sort of text. Like, very few artist websites really let the images exist in a vacuum. Again, some do, and some do quite effectively. But usually, artist websites will also have some combination of an artist's statement, or a biography, or you know, just textual descriptions of the work, which are useful for a couple different reasons um, that I can get into later on. But uh, they can, or they can either touch purely on what it is or get more into the process and how it was made. And an important thing with text is be yourself. If you don't want to write anything, you don't have to. And you shouldn't be like trying to write your biography in some stilted Chelsea Gallery style if that's not how you see yourself and not the type of work you make. But having some type of text alongside the images is going to help readers of your website understand what they're looking at, articulate how they describe it to others, um, and also give you know, search aggregators and, and bloggers and other people that might be writing about your work a little bit of shared vocabulary that you've seeded. You can say, my work is about this, and then they're probably going to take that and run with it rather than making their own um, decisions. That can be something you want, but know that by putting text there, you're influencing how people are going to see your work, usually for in a good way. The third thing that an artist website should have is focused content. And this means that when we're putting images and text up on our websites, we need to be an editor. We need to be aware that some of the stuff we can post to a website enhances our work or complements it, and some of it doesn't. There was this, you know, everyone who discovers Twitter for the first time logs on, sees people talking about Justin Bieber and burritos, and wonders why this exists. And the great thing about social media like that is that it's such a short lifespan that having that variety of content is a strength to the whole. Whereas for an artist website, it is more of a portfolio. It is more of a gallery experience. And when you're dealing with a limited con amount of content, a limited amount of work or paintings, you need to be aware that any individual piece of it, any text or any image or any story that you share on your site, is going to be seen as a part of that whole. So something that 
we talk about when we're talking about the abstract of what an artist's website is, is again going back to curation. And finally, the best artist websites I've seen do have updates frequently. Um, even if your paintings take two years to produce, and I know that some people's do, um, from that all the way down to somebody who's taking iPhone snaps on their way to work, which is virtually instantaneous capture to upload, there's still room to make updates because you don't have to be uploading new work. You could also, to a website, recurate your old work. You can say, you know, I've made this body of work. Maybe I have it on my website and maybe I don't actually add any images this whole year, but maybe every couple of months, I'll look at what's on the front page and I can make a change and remember something that I did. And that can influence your art practice going forward as an exercise just to remember where you've been. And it can also give people a chance to see a side of your work that they might not have come across before. If it, you know, maybe you put something up that isn't as recent or put something up that people haven't seen before. So adding new and recurating the old are both totally valid. But as with any website, people notice change more than static content. So revisiting your website and adding new content is something to keep in mind. So that's the abstract of you know, what I see as being the core components of an artist's website. They can be expressed in a couple different ways. And most artist websites that I've seen look like this. I'd say probably 90% of the websites that I have um, looked at is just I'm browsing around the internet, I see an artist website, I click on it, and I get something like this, where I have the name of the artist, a couple links on the left, and then either a grid of images or else a single image on the right. And this is neither bad nor good, this is simply common. Uh, I'm showing it as an example. Like, you know, image is primary, other things are slotted off to the left, maybe there's a link to an artist statement that takes you to an article type view, but still, that's, you know, work front and center, rest of it very minimal around it, is the most common form that I've seen. And when you're talking about whether or not you think this is a good approach for your own work, a question that I like to ask people is, is your goal in having a website and sharing your images or music or other media, um, whether you want to showcase just your best work in a very limited context, or whether your goal is to build a relationship with readers and viewers and to sort of get people to engage with your process. And the reason that I ask people that question is that whenever I tell people that they should have an artist website, they think of those, but there's a whole spectrum. And I think that spectrum encompasses what I call gallery websites versus blog websites. Um, at this point, we're mostly familiar with blogs, you know, set of articles in a row that you read, link to them on social media, Facebook, etc. But I'm talking about it in a slightly more abstract sense. Galleries are how I describe sites with less frequent but larger updates that have, you know, maybe a smaller amount of content that more thought is put into representing. Um, less work per website page, meaning that if you're looking at an individual page on the site, it might only have one image on it. Um, and that there might not be any like supporting articles or other unrelated content visible. Um, works generally highly categorized, so you can browse through by collection, by theme, by year, uh, and it'll be supported by some sort of more official text. On the other side, you have blogs, which feature very small incremental updates. Like this is what my most recent piece looks like, even if it's not something you're going to put on your front page, or you know you'll have a page that'll have in chronological order or spanning different media, several different types of work, sort of more variety displayed on the same screen. Types of work are generally more intermixed um, because most blogs are organized chronologically. If you, start, if you jump around in media, that's going to be represented on a blog website, whereas on a gallery style website, you'd be separating those as you put them into different rooms. And work might be interspersed with other types of articles or other types of content. And I raise this not as a dichotomy, but as a spectrum. You can do both. If you are looking at how to represent yourself as an artist online, most people end up doing a combination of these two things. And the only real question is, what does the user see first? If you want to have the first thing that your user sees be a blog, there's a lot of really easy ways to do that. Installing WordPress by default is probably one of the easiest because it defaults to a blog-like view but you can convert it to a more gallery static web page view. And you can then use the structure of your site, the menus and the different links on the site to guide people through the pages so that maybe they start on the blog or maybe they start on a gallery and then they get down into the articles about your process or about different media. And again, 
this is a totally subjective, very personal thing, how you decide to organize and guide people through your site. Um, what I hope we can do tonight is show you at least a couple of the tools that you can use to do this on your own sites or um, on those for, of friends and relatives. So with that out of the way, let's get into a little bit more of the how. We're all at a WordPress meetup. Some of us are here because they heard it was an art-related event. Some of us are here because we've been coming for three plus years. Um, hello to many familiar faces here. And again, thank you for the new ones. But uh, whether you know what WordPress is or not, it is a blogging software that actually makes a really great platform for building websites. WordPress powers something on the order of 20% of the top sites on the internet which is an order of magnitude greater than most other solutions that are out there, and I think certainly any that are free. Um, it's been around for 10, over 10 years. It's incredibly proven. It has one of the richest ecosystems of themes and tools and templates of any website authoring tool. And um, the community around it is very strong, which is why events like this and why events like the WordCamp that we mentioned exist. Um, those are community-driven events designed to give people who use or develop with these tools um, and with WordPress a better venue to communicate, to share resources, and to get ideas about different ways to use the internet. Um, I think it's a really, really awesome way to build an artist website specifically, especially because there's two different ways to use it. WordPress is a piece of software, but there's also this website, wordpress.com, where you can get a free blog, um, you know, no money down, no obligation, totally free, like Facebook, in order to just like get it up there, get your work out in front of people, and um, see how it works. So there's no barrier to entry. Um, you don't have to install anything. You don't have to pay for a server. If you want to, you can install WordPress on your own equipment. You can install it um, and configure it in an incredibly custom way, or just sort of let WordPress.com give you a platform to build on. Um, which you choose is just going to come down to how technical you are and long term, whether you want to do anything that's like a little bit less standard because there are some things that you won't be able to do on the hosted version on WordPress.com. But by and large, that shouldn't be a whole lot of concern to us. Um, as I mentioned, WordPress.com is a hosting site for WordPress. It lets you get a blog or a website for free with capabilities similar to Tumblr's in terms of following and sharing and, and liking um, other posts in their network. Uh, I'd say probably about 30 to 60% of the blogs that I come across um, are hosted with WordPress.com. It's a pretty widespread system, and it's actually a great one. I'll get into some of the resources they've put up specifically for the artists using their platform. Um, and as I mentioned, installing WordPress yourself lets you customize your site fully. So if you don't want, if you get beyond WordPress.com, it is possible to outgrow it. It's a little bit less likely for um, non-developer audiences, but be aware that it's an option. I already said that. Either way, if you want to do it on your own server, I did find a video while I was researching this talk called How to Build an Artist Website in 10 Minutes with WordPress that leads you start to finish through the process of signing up for a service like HostGator, which we mentioned in the introduction, or Bluehost, which are hosting companies where you can pay an annual fee to get a website URL, a web address, and a server um, on which you can install WordPress and start setting up your own site. That's gonna be the complement to using something like WordPress.com where you don't have to um, get your server first. So, I have a demo on here somewhere, but I'll just do that. I'm gonna skip the part where you register for WordPress.com um, in this demo because I don't want a throwaway account, but once you do, you get to a page that looks like this. Um, if you decide to go the WordPress.com route, which is what I'm gonna recommend for most, um, anybody that's looking to start a new website uh, on WordPress, just, just get a sense for how it works. You go in, you say, yes, I want a free account, you can give it an address like um, art meetup. It'll tell you whether it's available. That's a pretty, not a pretty common one, so it's available. Uh, you can say I'll use the free address. Let's give it name Boston WordPress meetup site. And then I'm going to make this private since it's just an example. Go down, free, create blog. It's now yours. If you visit your dashboard, you, know, you can just start getting in and poking around. If you go to the front end of the site, it's gonna look like that by default. They're not gonna put any content in there for you, but we can 
excuse me, we can go in and say, oh, it's post, it's avenue post. And I'm just going to grab, uh, I'll grab an image. Doodle from my sketchbook that we can upload as the first post. Um, just hit insert. Without doing anything else, we'll hit publish. And now we've begun to build our website. That's how long it takes to sign up. Well, with minus the two minutes it takes to enter a username and a password for the service, that's how long it takes to sign up from first visiting WordPress.com through to getting a site where somebody can come to this website and say, oh, I didn't change the title, I should have done that come to the website and start looking at this work. Um, from here, we can start getting much more in-depth with customizations. I'm gonna get into a little bit about how that works in a minute or two. But if you know people that are like on the fence about getting a website because they think it's hard, it, we're trying really, really hard to make it as simple as possible with this tool. And I encourage people to try it and to use it because I think that it might be easier than they think. When you're making a website, you know, this looks sort of bland, particularly since that's a version with no content. Um, this looks kind of bland, like that's not an exciting site. That might be good. Maybe you don't want other stuff crowding out your art on the page, but you can get a lot more in depth with how a site looks. So I'm actually gonna flip um, over to the demo site I, I made when I gave this talk last week, which has a little bit more content. You know, it's a very similar layout. It's just, you know, a couple pieces of text, some images in a series. And if we wanted to start changing the way this looks, WordPress provides a system of themes, which let you, in one stroke, change the look or, the the look or feel of your um, website. So let's try this one. It's probably gonna look almost exactly the same because of the way this is set up. And you can customize these images and you can you know, pick and choose the text on your site, what the titles are. Um, and really quickly start finding a look and feel of the site just by browsing through the options that are available that's gonna to appeal to you and it's gonna match your work. But what does it mean to match your work? The theme is the presentation vehicle for your art online. And the main dimensions on which that affects your work are color and tone. That is, does the colors, each theme will have a set of colors that it uses and it's possible to customize those, but by default, you know, if your work is predominantly in one color and you pick a theme that's gonna clash with that, you might want to look at a different one or you might want to look at ways to customize it so that the colors match a little bit better. It's actually very similar to matting your work. If you are putting a physical mat around a painting or around a photograph, a, black, a blank white one is going to be the most neutral, whereas you, know, you can actually do a lot of really cool stuff with, say, an orange mat or other colors of mat board, but you need to be aware of whether or not it's going to work with the image that you're putting the frame around. And similarly, texture and space. This would be equivalent to this would be how big is that map board? What type of frame do you put? Um, is what's, you know, what's the environment in which it's seen? Um, as an example, just went to Goodwill on the way over here and I picked up two frames. You know, both of these, I've seen themes that kind of resemble both of these types of frames for showing art. If you can't see in the back, this is a sort of wonderful metal gaudy frame that says dog and has little bones in the corner. And this is a plain wood frame. These could be equally valid, depending on the type of work you do and how you want it to be perceived, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily have this be my first choice if I was going to be trying to design a website for an artist, you know, like, say, Pollock or Mondrian or something, and I wouldn't necessarily choose this. Um, actually, there's really very few instances when I wouldn't default to something like this. Um, having a, the reason that a lot of the default themes on WordPress are very minimal is that it's more compatible with a wide range of photos and art and text. But um, again, just what message do you want to send? You're going to find themes that have a very playful feel. And I've seen some that do really awesome things with kind of like a more graffiti type aesthetic. 
others are going to be very spare. And everything in between is valid, and there's thousands upon thousands of free themes out there for WordPress. Um, basically, you just want to avoid something that's going to completely overwhelm your work. Anyone remembers like late 90s web pages? It was really hard to see the images and text on them. This was a joke April Fool's Day page from last year um, from one of the a web um, framework company. But just you know, think about the fact that this is going to be the environment in which your work is perceived. There's a lot of ways to find themes. We looked at how WordPress.com has a lot built in. If you're using WordPress on your own server, you can actually go out and purchase themes or download themes from other sources. All that I would say on this is to avoid Googling for free WordPress themes because that way lies bad code that could compromise your site. Because WordPress powers so much of the internet, unfortunately it has attracted its share of hackers and malicious coders. So getting your themes from within the WordPress dashboard, if you're If you go in here and you're saying, like, what themes do I have available? This is probably one of the safest sources of themes out there because all of these are from a central repository that's been vetted to some extent. Um, a lot of paid themes, there's ways you can actually buy a custom theme that maybe gives you some more advanced functionality or a design that's particularly suited to your needs. Both of those I would do before, either a free theme, free theme from here or a paid theme from external users, I would do before just looking for free themes outside of the WordPress theme repository. That's just, particularly if you're not a technical person, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're going to lose your work online. Very rare, if you're worried. It's not particularly common, just exercise a little bit of caution. Um, as I mentioned, WordPress.com is a built-in theme, theme directory. There's a lot of built-in ones that, pardon me. I asked our co-organizer, Mel Choice, who works for the company that runs WordPress.com, what some of her favorites would be for showing art. And she picked a bunch of the sort of more minimal, um, customizable ones. You can sort of see there's a, a wide variety of different layouts that are available um, with these free themes running on the free WordPress.com. And you can sort of get pretty in-depth with the customization of some of them to change like the layout and the arrangement of your images and which one you find works the best with your particular medium is going to be a matter of trial or error, but since there's no cost to switch between any of these, um, I do encourage experimentation. There's also a whole bunch of, as I mentioned, um, themes that you can get through WordPress when you're running it on your own server. I don't know if all of these are available on .com, I suspect most of them aren't, but um, they're gonna be, you know, this is Comic Press, which is a theme that's designed specifically for comic authors. Uh, if you are a cartoonist, or if you're someone that does art that has a serial component, it's definitely possible to run that type of site on WordPress. You just need to look a little bit more for the tools that you're gonna be able to use to display it in a way that maintains the continuity of the story. Um, additionally, there's a whole bunch of these like sort of photography-oriented portfolio themes that are designed 100% first and foremost, oh, there's the layout I was talking about, for um, putting images up online rather than most of the ones that we looked at before are kind of equal purpose. You could use them for blogs, you can use them for text. I mean, um, photos or art. But the good news is, is that almost everything that's designed for a photographer works really well for painters and drawers and video artists as well. Video is a little bit trickier because of the thumbnail aspect, but um, whatever your medium, photo themes work really well for visual work of any sort because it puts the visuals first and foremost. And whatever theme you pick, it's distinctly possible that you're going to install it and it's not going to look the way that it did on the box and you're not going to necessarily know why. Um, if you run into that situation, if you feel like you continue experimenting, but also there's a pretty robust support forum for WordPress where you can go and you can ask a question and say, hey, I installed the Hexen theme and I, you know, I looked at it and I've not seen the image grid the way that it looked on the screenshot. How do I get this done? Each theme will have um, an ability to go and ask questions. Frequently, the theme authors will respond. Um, even more frequently, other community members that might have run into the same problems will be willing to step up. Um, part of what we try to do in this meetup as well is every month provide an opportunity for just you know mingling and chatting and Q&A. So you know, definitely feel free to bring questions about WordPress-driven websites here, and we'll do our best to help. 
So we've talked about getting a site, we've talked about posting to it, we've talked about finding a theme. How do you like configure it in order to look the way that you want it to? Um, what we've doing previously, I, I made a post, I added an image to it, and I sort of went from there. That's kind of what I've done with this site so far. I, you know, one post per image, one image after the other. If you want to do a new one, you can say new post, upload an image, click publish, and just continue repeating that cycle. And this can work really well if we want to um, if we want to use a theme that's designed for that. Some themes work better for the default view, and some require a little bit more customization. But right out of the box, I can say you know themes. What was that one that I really liked? I know there's one that I think is, is pretty good at this called Mixfolio, so I'll activate it. And now when I visit my site, it's gone from that scrolling option to this kind of grid of thumbnails of my posts. And I got this just by you know, publishing one image after the other, and each one of these is a post, so if I click on it, I go through and I see the full image. I can actually, because these are photographs, um, that's not enabled, I must not have uploaded the right one. But sometimes um, themes will give you the ability, if I had uploaded a better file, this would actually be showing the exit data for my camera, like aperture and, and shutter settings, which can be something you want to show or not, depending. And then it gives you the opportunity to start a conversation. You can turn all of this off, but you know, by default, that's not a bad way to show a photograph. Like, if I go back to the home page. You know, this is this is pretty nice. I know a lot of people that you know this is all that they need, and this is what they've asked for when they're saying, "I want an art website." Let's make it look like this. But it's also possible to sort of customize that and um, start altering the way the theme looks in order to take more advantage of it. For example, you've noticed that I have this header image. That's something that you can choose to have or not. But most themes will support some type of header that you can go in and say, you know, appearance header. What do I want to show up at the top of my site? And there's times when you might not want this because that image now is gonna show above every single photo on my site and that might not necessarily be what I want all the time. So if you decide you don't want to, you can always undo and remove these sorts of things. So now if I go back to my site, I'm getting my thumbnails, but I'm not necessarily getting those other elements of the theme that you can turn on and off. Then, Maybe you don't want to have uh, one post per page and, and to use the theme's default layouts. Maybe you want a little bit more um, ability to write some text on the front page and to say, you know, my name is Cat and White. I take photographs and make weird wire sculptures of cats, and here's my work. You know, if you want to get a little bit more custom, you can actually very easily change that. This is a little bit hidden, hopefully, by doing this in, in a time when it's being recorded on video. It'll give people a resource to come back to it. but. When you go to the reading settings, you can actually say that you want your front page to display a particular page in your site. I'm gonna pick this one gallery and hit save changes. And what the gallery page is, WordPress gives you the ability to do posts, which is like an uh, update that has a timestamp, and then it lets you do pages, which are things that are sort of supposed to be longer lived. Like maybe you'd make a page for your artist statement or a page for your bio or um, a particular body of work so that you have one place to go where you have links to all of those pieces of content. And I can go in here and say all pages. And it gives you this ability when you're uploading images, you can create a gallery. So I'm gonna make a new one. Um, if I was gonna create a gallery and pick these images for it, You can just sort of select, check which ones you want. I want to do that. Create a new gallery, and won't change any settings. I'll hit insert, and we'll save those changes. Now, when I visit my site, this is what shows up first. And I can put text above this. I could put a link to a video. I can I can sort of have a lot more control over what's going to be the first impression that people come to when they visit my website if you take that step to set up a page. So, you know, I'm 
just to show like how easy it is to put this together. Um, just grab a random Vimeo video as well. Uh, if you do mixed media work, um, a really cool thing to know about is that WordPress supports this stupendously easy way of putting those onto your site. I can actually just paste the URL to the video and in almost all cases when I refresh the page, it's just automatically embedded now. You don't have to worry about any of the sharing on Vimeo. You just have to know the URL to the thing that you want to put on your site. So if you do video work or if you do work that's hosted on YouTube or Vimeo, or I believe even, uh, we might, uh, there's a, a number of other services, some of which are more musically oriented that you can use to embed content there. So give that a try if you do media, multimedia. And if you are in the static image world, know that you can actually customize how this looks. So you know, I could switch this to circles and we'll update and save. And now when I reload, I'm gonna get a different view of the work. I'm gonna start just really quickly being able to iterate through the built-in options that WordPress provides. And there's a, I'm gonna be sharing the link to these slides. There's a bunch of links in here. This is one that goes to an article on wordpress.com about the different types of gallery that are available and sort of different ways to configure them. Um, as the final example, we'll actually switch this to one that they put in called Tiled Mosaic, which takes this sort of very static three on a line approach and sort of makes it more um, dynamic and you can sort of like have, mashes the images together to mix them up a bit. Yep. Sure, if you click on a gallery, it'll give you an edit button. And when you click on that edit button, it's gonna take you to this pop-up modal window where you can start changing the um, settings over here. You can also have them show up in a random order, which is sort of a nice way to get a little variety when people visit your site over and over again, even if you're not uploading new images. I put this in, this is all default functionality. There's no, there's nothing custom about the theme here, but what I did was I made a new page. Um, so I went, you know, I just pages, add new, seconds, gallery, and then there's this button, add media, that you can click and select images, oh, that would be different. Create gallery, I'll select these images, and now when I'll do that, let's set this one up as uh, square tiles. Now when I do that, this page too is going to have a, a gallery within it. A gallery is something that can exist on a page or within a post as well. You can actually have you know, one of these for each post on my personal site. I don't actually maintain a gallery page, but the most recent post that I put up um, from the event I was at yesterday is using one of these galleries. Was there a question in the back? Yes, we can't hear the question, so could you repeat oh, the question? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. The question in that case was um, what button I clicked in order to get at the gallery settings. Um, thank you, I'll do my best. If, you, if I don't repeat a question, just be like, stop. Thank you. So another thing is that when you are going in and when you're customizing these images, you can click on them and there's these other fields. And these might come pre-filled out with certain um, types of camera. It might have, like this says Olympus digital camera. I didn't enter that, my camera did. But you can delete it and you can say, picture of the sidewalk near Union Square. And you can get a caption. Maybe this one says sidewalk with multiple L's. And that's gonna get reflected in the view, in the way this renders. Now, like captions are gonna show up when you hover over an image on this particular theme. How those types of elements are handled will change a bit, but, yep. Certain types, yes. Um, whether a theme displays it, I think is largely up to the theme. A lot of the photo, sorry, thank you. <laughs> the question was, um, would WordPress pick up metadata that's embedded in the file? Um, whether it's from your camera, or whether you do some sort of processing to add metadata to it later. Um, those would be things like, you know, in the photo world, type of camera used, et cetera, but you could also put copyright information and so on. Um, WordPress maintains all of that when you upload it but whether it gets rendered or not is gonna be up to the theme. And um, in this particular case, stuff like caption and description, you can override. So the other thing is that 
whenever you have one of these, you can choose to link your photos to what's called an attachment page. Maybe you don't have any posts on your site. Maybe you just have one page that you've set to be the front page of your site and you've put a gallery of images on it, but you've filled out a little description for each one of these and you've given them a caption where appropriate. So when people click through, they get something like this page where they can see the work in that more isolated gallery type experience rather than the more salon style thumbnail grid. Um, and pardon me. the alternative is that, at least on WordPress.com, it'll also set your galleries up so that when you click on something, it'll just give you that inline view of one image and you can scroll back and forth. And you can turn this off as well. Um, these are just a whole bunch of the stuff that's built in by default on WordPress.com specifically and is easy or built in to add on um, self-hosted WordPress sites. Other things I was mentioning, backgrounds and headers, you know, I removed that one of the men on the roof because I didn't necessarily want that to be the first thing that people saw on every page on my site because that, may, in this particular case, I was hoping that the photo, if they went to the page for a specific photo, I'd want that one first. A lot of the time, what I've seen people do is their header will be more of like a personal brand statement. So, um, for example, a friend of mine, um, from Somerville has this as her header image, and you know so that, that won't. Uh, it's configured so that that won't appear on the interior pages, but it still provides a little bit of added texture on the home page. Um, backgrounds, you can actually set images and different colors of the background of your site depending on the theme. Again, if you're picking an image and your theme permits that, just be aware that you're going to want to do something sort of neutral, maybe a texture rather than like a, a full-blown piece of art, because then you might have that conflict between the one you want to be the, cent the focus that might be very spare and the background that might be very raucous, that might be drawing attention away from what you're hoping to be the focus of the page. And uh, Lightbox is what I was just demonstrating where you click and it pops up this overlay where you can scroll through. This is, again, a stylistic choice, um, particularly if you're into black and white photography. I know like Magnum Photo in New York, they actually give you the ability to toggle whether the light box is black or white because that can make an, a difference on how the photo is perceived. The default one doesn't have that customization, so if you want to just turn it off, we'll go to the dashboard, and there's a media settings page, and I'll say, I'll uncheck enable carousel, and now, go back to the website. Now when I click on something, it's going to take me directly to that one-up view rather than popping up the light box. So as with everything else we're going to go over tonight, personal preference whether you want it or not. Yep. Um, the question was, can you change that setting for an individual gallery rather than on every single gallery that's used, and I don't actually know because I've never tried to do a one-off. Um, but I will experiment after this and leave the comments on the meetup page. Yep. Do you think we're on a separate page? Possibly, but that's a global setting, so I don't. I just don't know how that would be um, interpreted, and that's you know that's something that I'll need to look into. Good question. Um, if you're looking for themes outside of the native theme repositories, there are a lot that build themselves as portfolio themes. Frequently what that means is that they've given you the ability, when you're going through here and you've got posts and pages, they'll also have a portfolio category that will get special treatments. It'll maybe show up in a different grid somewhere on a particular page. And this can be really nice, but um, I would recommend if you're not super familiar with WordPress, stick to themes that just use the built-in functionality because Unfortunately, if you move away from them, it's possible that you'll do a lot of data entry for a particular theme, and then you'll switch themes and realize that all of those posts, they're still there, but they won't be available unless you're using a theme from that shop, which can be frustrating, um, because there's not necessarily good tools available to you know, re-expose those if you switch themes. So um, technically, what this is getting into is that certain themes can do what's called a custom post type, where you make a particular type of data that gets special treatment and special types of handling within WordPress. That lets you do some very, very nifty things from a theme layout standpoint, but it does mean that you can have some trouble moving from one theme to another. And um, regardless of your theme, there's a couple things that I'd recommend that you keep in mind. I'm doing all time, I'm doing all time. 
Small image files make web pages load faster. And by small, I don't mean how much of the screen it covers, but actually how big the file is. The type of size that's going to make you run out of hard disk space rather than make it easier to see more or less of the image. Um, Photoshop has this function called Save for Web, so if you're using that to process your photos, um, may take advantage of it. Um, high is generally, if you're exporting an image, it'll give you the option to save it as a JPEG with high resolution. That's usually enough. Um, particularly if you're saving a large image, you wouldn't want to go any over that, or your site's going to take a long time to load. And there's a whole bunch of very, very scholarly in depth research that proves unequivocally that okay, websites that take a long time to load, people leave. Um, if they, if they really want to go to your website, they will. But generally, particularly since so many of us are on our phones all the time, keeping the file small makes things easier. Yeah? Um, are you going to talk about like retina-ready images versus regular resolution images? Not. Nah. So the question was, am I going to talk about retina-ready images versus sort of regular images? Yeah. Not in particular. I am going to recommend um, that for the purposes of, of this type of site, Retina screens, who's not familiar with what one of those is? A couple people. It's this um, new display branding that Apple's come up with to describe the really, really high resolution screens they put in their devices. And what that means is that there's more pixels, there's more dots on the screen, and there's more dots per inch, so images and text appear crisper. This does mean that if you have a normally sized image file, you're not taking advantage of the full resolution the screen has to offer. There's a whole lot of tricks there. So if you want your images to look good on retina screens, you can do a whole bunch of different things. Um, that's kind of a different talk than this. This is more about, you know, I, I don't want to go too into the technical side beyond saying that it's important and we should uh, be aware of the files that we're uploading. If you're interested in retina, I don't know whether Dave talked, touches on it in this talk, but we actually had a talk here last fall on optimizing your images um, for WordPress sites, which is on the Boston WP YouTube channel and also available through the link that I'm going to share for these slides. But um, regardless of whether you're technical or savvy or not, uh, Dave goes over a whole bunch of tools that are available for tuning and compressing the images that you use. Um, and another thing to note is that if you use a service like WordPress.com, um, they will be doing some stuff in the background to make your site load a little bit faster as well. If you're running your own site, Dave's talk will be slightly more applicable to you because you'll have a little bit more control over the plugins. And um, another best practice, just as I mentioned before, update your site because it'll keep you thinking about what you've done and what you want to do, and it'll keep people that are visiting your site engaged and aware of the new content you're putting out. There are a whole lot of resources on WordPress specifically and Word, sorry, WordPress in general and on WordPress for artists specifically. Um, WordPress.com maintains a blog where they blog about blogging. And they actually have a whole bunch of articles that are specific to the photographers and artists and creative um, publishers that use their site. So these are just a couple that I pulled up. This one's about you know, art blogs on WordPress.com. It's got some examples of particular sites that might be doing some interesting things. Um, this one's on painters with portfolio portfolios. This is more of an instructional site on creating a portfolio site. Uh, there's also this, um, scroll down here, there's also all of these, I think, link to a page on WordPress.com for themes for art bloggers, where it's actually a theme slash features slash art. You can say, I only want to look at themes that are, are designs to be used with this type of content, and they're going to be the ones that put images first and foremost. And you can see some of these cost money, some of them are free, and um, all of them are available to use um, either through WordPress.com or for self-hosted sites. Um, and also, something that I always like to note is that WordPress isn't the be-all and end-all solution for websites. There's a lot of other options out there. They're out there for a reason. They're alternatives. Alternatives are good for an ecosystem. Tumblr, Pinterest, Blogger. I've seen good art websites put together solely on Pinterest where someone just makes a Pinterest board, which is a social media site for sharing images. They just make that, and they put their own images up, and that's their website. That's where they send people. Squarespace is a site where you can sort of buy a, a theme or a template and use it to construct a site for your images. Carbon-made is a very similar structure. 
Flickr, 500 picks, um, these are photo-oriented websites, but I follow people on Flickr that do pen drawings and then post photos of them. So these can all be customized to your needs if you're doing static visual art. Um, Facebook, everyone's on Facebook, practically everyone. Even if you don't like using it, you probably know a lot of people that do. It's one other option for maintaining a presence for your art on the web. You, if you don't want the overhead of maintaining your own website, you can make a Facebook page for your art. That's another way to get that connection to people and get that engagement. The goal, remember, is, is to get your work in front of people for whatever those reasons we listed at the beginning are. So however you do it, whether you're writing your own HTML from hand and notepad, um, all the way through to using something like WordPress.com with the default theme that's like no customization whatsoever, equally valid as long as you're able to achieve your goal of getting your images in front of people. And um, you need to pick the solution that lets you focus on your art. So if you find that you're spending more time worrying about the technology of your website, probably a good idea to look at other options um, because you want to be making art. You want, and maybe, you know, maybe some of us spend more time making websites than making what would be traditionally considered art. But if you want to share an image of something you've made or a recording of something you've made with the world, that should be the goal, not the way that you get it there. Two slides on selling your work online. One, I wouldn't do it through your portfolio website. Maintaining a good sort of built-in shopping cart and e-commerce presence on your own site is basically a full-time job. And I would recommend using one of the existing set, uh, systems like Etsy or Society6 or Turning Art, 500 picks and possibly even Flickr as well lets you sell prints. Um, if you're looking to sell prints of your work in particular or even originals, look at a website that's dedicated to letting artists do that rather than trying to do it yourself because you're going to be finding that you're spending a lot of time on it. And I'm going to be sharing links to the slides. So um, it'll be easier to read. <laughs> And also, in terms of selling your work, a contact form may be enough. Particularly if you're doing like big paintings, you know, you're not those, you're not necessarily going to be shipping those through Etsy. Uh, but maybe you'll say like, if you like my work, please get in touch. I'd be happy to talk about you know sales or commissions or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, that can be enough as long as people end up on your website and see the form. So we're almost at the end. What have we got? In order to make a good artist website, we need to have some sort of goal for what we're trying to achieve from it. We talked about getting exposure, building a relationship with people, and using it as a chance to curate your own work. All of that can be accomplished to varying degrees by structuring your content, figuring out like what do I want people to see first? Do I want lots of updates? Do I want a more blog type feel? Or do I want this to be sort of more of a spare gallery feel? Um, picking a theme to complement your work is this going to accentuate what I make or detract from it or distract from it more technically? And also keeping it up to date. You know, what, do I, what, what are my options for making people want to come back to my site? It's pretty easy to do. It's not hard to make a website. It's particularly easy over the past couple of years. I think WordPress personally is my favorite tool for doing it. There's a lot of others out there as well. And I think the important thing is just experimenting and finding out what works for you. So the question was whether I can recommend tools for checking your work in different environments um, so that you can see whether it would look the same on a Mac or a PC or different browsers. Um, the short answer is no. The best way to do it is to say, hey, Emily, you have a, a Windows machine, right? Can I use that for a second? Or like, hey, you know, my coworker, I know you have an Android phone. Can I look at it to make sure everything looks good? There's tools out there for doing that type of testing on a development level, but as an individual, I, I don't have any that I can specifically recommend. And a lot of themes, particularly these days, are going to look different on different types of sites. Um, let's see if this one does. Very frequently, oh, and now I just realized I'm not. Was great. Very frequently, sites will kind of relay themselves out as you change them, as you change the size, so they're going to have a different appearance on. Uh, phone than they will on a desktop. I see that as a strength rather than a uh, detriment. Um, 
make sure the image looks good, and that's going to be more about the coloring of it and their, the viewer's screen or monitor than anything else. But in terms of like making sure that everything's exactly the same, that may not have been what you were asking, but I would say don't worry as much about that, about just making sure that things appear at, in a way that looks good. Does that help? We can talk after. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Is there a way to have two different galleries and have it kind of automate so that you tag this whole group to the other page? Um, you could do that with categories. Uh, categories and tags are one of the things that you can add to an image. Sorry, the question was, he's building a website for an artist who wants to have a gallery of work that's sort of more archived and a gallery of work that's actively available for sale and to have it move from one to the other when she wants it to. So when you're making a post in WordPress, um, does it have to be a post then? Uh, I don't, yeah, I think it does have to be a post. There's ways, if you're developing the site, there's ways to make categories apply to images, but I don't know how to make an automatic gallery of them. I would do it as a post or a post type in that regard, um, because then you're going to have access to tags and categories, and you can just have one that's like sold, and if you check that, it disappears from one and appears in the other. Okay, who's going to that? Um, are there any themes or plugins that The question is, are there themes or plugins that are available that, that help people um, avoid having their images downloaded and used without um, your consent? And yes, there are. There's plugins that I know exist. I haven't used any personally, but I do know that there are plugins that will watermark your images. Um, there's some plugins that make it slightly harder to get at the image, but I'd say that most reasonably, you know, anyone that's done any web development is gonna have the ability to just pop the hood open and get at that media file. So the ones that just make it hard to right click and save as are only gonna be of certain benefit depending on, on what you're worried about. I would say the biggest things are um, making sure that you do take advantage of the metadata in your images and use something like Lightroom or Photoshop to embed a copyright notice in it. And if you wanna go the extra step, it's um, pretty easy to make an automated system through Photoshop, like maybe as an action, or using something like Lightroom that will watermark your images for you. Um, those are, there's no really good answer there. Once it's online, it's kind of fair game. Um, but, and, and you know, unfortunately, I do hear regularly, particularly with photographer friends, hearing that, you know, oh, hey, I just read an article from so-and-so journal and they were using my photo. I didn't tell them they could do that. And there's. You know, that's when you send them a nice email and you say, I, you know, this photo of the Boston, you know, Zagan Bridge, I would love it if you would take that down, because you never asked. But uh, in terms of automated solutions, nothing's perfect. Is another question? Yes, so, Actually, there's a couple different levels that you can, you're right. Um, <laughs> keeping me honest. The question was, can you restrict your website from appearing in Google? Can you limit it to a small subset of people? And um, absolutely. If you go to the, which one is it, is it reading? So many dashboards. If you go to the reading settings page, you can say discourage search engines from indexing my site. Um, also, on WordPress.com, you can mark a site as private. On WordPress, if you're using it on your own server, you can install a plugin that will achieve the same thing. This means that you can specifically invite given users, or you can give people a, a username and a password, and they will then have access to your site, and the general public will not. Can you can password protect an individual page. So if I wanted to, um, let's make a... Let's make that second. Uh, yes, the question was, um, can you password protect or restrict access to a specific page? We'll make our second page here, um, second gallery, uh, password protected. Visibility, thank you. I very rarely restrict access to anything, so this isn't a function that I use a whole lot. But now, you know, this one's visibility is private. I'm actually gonna make it password protected and we'll call this one Boston WP. You can specify individual passwords for particular posts. Now if I view this page, this is weird because I'm technically logged in, but I can now type Boston 
WP and hit submit. And then I'll get access to that protected gallery page. Um, if you mark it private and you don't have, if you, and you don't give other people accounts on your site, it won't show up to anyone but you when you're logged in. I actually use this to um, archive on my site inspiration and um, images that you know aren't mine that I don't want to put up because I, I don't you know want to misuse somebody else's image, but I want to sort of keep it as personal archive and I want to keep it next to where I keep my work. Private posts aren't going to show up to the general public, so that is but one of many, many, many use cases for them. Um, and if you do give someone an account on your site, they will all be visible to them as well. So that can be a great way to restrict a whole subset of pages on your site to a particular person. The question was, can I talk for a second about child themes? When you're developing themes for WordPress, there, you can obviously have themes, but there's also themes that make use of other themes. And these get a little bit more complicated, but it's a great way to take one of these templates that I've selected as a base and customize the colors or customize the looks and feel to fit your needs. Um, I'm not gonna go terribly in depth on them. They are really useful for this type of thing because you can take a theme that provides a structure and then customize it to your work. But I think diving into the how of that is a little out of scope of this. There are a lot of good talks. Um, I think there might even be one that had been given here at this meetup. They're available online, um, both through the Boston WP YouTube group and also a website called WordPress.tv, which is chock full of videos from these types of events. Any other questions? So the question was that I was cautioning people to take advantage of an existing site like Etsy rather than to use a plugin to sell work through their own site. Um, the man who asked the question mentioned WooCommerce, which is a plugin that's pretty widespread that lets you maintain your own marketing component to a WordPress site. And it's totally valid. That's a really great solution. I recommend against it um, primarily because I've been talking about these sorts of questions with people that have making a site as their hurdle. And I think making a site is a big enough hurdle to get over that trying to think, oh shoot, and then how do I integrate this with some sort of shopping portal? It's, it's a more technical job to set that up. Um, if you have friends or, or relatives, if, you're, if you are not a technical person and have friends or relatives that are um, more interested in that sort of thing, it's definitely something you can have people help you set up. And definitely, I've never done it myself, so I shouldn't be taking it as an authoritative source on how long it takes to maintain a, a shopping cart type thing on your website. That's a good point. It, So that suggestion, if you couldn't hear it, was that PayPal can also, you can make a PayPal button where people can just click to sort of send you money, and if you have a small inventory and don't mind setting that up on a per item basis, that can be sort of an intermediate solution where you're not configuring this whole plugin, but you are allowing yourself to take some amounts of payment for work through your website. Um, by and large, it's gonna take a while to make money selling your work online, and, and most people that I know that do it well go in more of the prints and brand good direction rather than selling originals. Um, but depending on what you want to do, it can be totally viable to look into those options. So again, just you know, figure out what you want your goals to be online. Just be aware that by putting a shopping cart doesn't instantly mean you're going to be getting a whole lot in sales. There's a lot of marketing that has to go along with that. Any more questions? I'm um, working on a website for a gallery. And the owner would like each artist to have their own page dedicated to <coughs> with a unique URL, custom URL. Can you do that page by page, or is it easy with the gallery name slash artist name? Um, the question was, uh, he's making a website for a gallery, and he wants to know whether it's possible to have 
a unique page for each artist where it can just be like the artist's name rather than gallery name slash artist name. Is that it? Yeah, they want to have their own domain name. Um, or does it need to be a separate site? There's ways to set up. So if you, what he's asking specifically is if I'm selling my work on the Pace Gallery website, heaven forbid. Um, does it have to be pace.com slash catamwhite, or could I have catamwhite.com be my artist page on that website? I'm pretty sure there's ways to do that. I think that gets into the realm of a version of WordPress called multi-site, which is a more complex install where you manage multiple different websites from an individual domain, or the easier way to do it would be just to have, you can just set up a, a basic website for the URL of the artist, and you can have it redirect to their page on the website. I think those are going to be the easiest ways to accomplish that. There are probably others. I've not built a site like that, so I haven't investigated any personally. Any final question? Thank you very much. I hope this was helpful.